What's going on retro gaming fans and welcome back to another episode of Rehab Gaming. So today we have a performance memory card for the Nintendo 64 and for some reason the memory has become corrupted which suggests to me that this battery might be going bad. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take this thing apart and I'm going to show you how to swap out a battery in one of these things. Stay tuned and we'll get right at it. Alrighty, so to give you a little backstory on these memory cards, the Nintendo 64 utilized memory cards for most of their games in order to save your game data. Now, there are a few games out there who had onboard save abilities for the game cartridge itself, like Zelda Ocarina of Time, and then there were other games who relied on memory cards in order to save your game data. So, with this memory card, the way that they were designed, the memory chips actually used a battery on the inside of the card itself in order to keep the save data populated in the RAM chip. And it used SRAM for this function. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take this apart and we're going to see what kind of battery lies in here. We're going to measure it to see what the battery voltage is setting at right now, especially since when we load this cartridge into a Nintendo 64, it says that there's a problem with the memory card and that the data may be corrupt. Now, there are actually a couple of different sizes of memory cards that came out for the Nintendo 64. I actually have another one here, and it's going to be the smaller form factor. Now, it's about half the size. However, the cards are quite identical. Um, I don't know exactly the reason why they decided to make the longer cards, I think it had something to do with easier to produce and easier to get out of the controller itself. However, the smaller memory cards here actually fit up inside the controller connector on the bottom and were flush with the edge and the longer ones actually stuck out from the edge of the controller port. Now, we're going to go ahead and open up the big one and then we'll open up the smaller one a little later on. But on this larger memory card, you actually have two screws on the front hand side, and then you have two screws on the back hand side, and they're both at either ends of the card to help hold it together. So we're going to go ahead and take those screws out right now. So all four of these screws actually utilize a small Phillips screwdriver in order to get them out. And as soon as you get all four screws out of the larger memory cards, what you can do is you can separate the back from the front. They just lift off of one another and exposes the main board inside. So on the bottom side of this main board is actually where the battery is housed. So you just lift the main board up. There's a couple of little posts right up here towards the top to help hold the card into place. And it looks like they put a little bit of hot glue on either side in order to keep it from moving back and forth inside the card. And we're going to turn the main board over and it'll show us where the battery is. So the cool thing about these larger cards is that the batteries are actually in their own holder. They're not soldered to the board. So these are a lot easier to change once it comes to the time that the batteries need to be changed out. What I like to do in order to get the batteries out is I'll use a small flathead screwdriver. Just kind of stick it right up here where these two cutouts are. Push the battery towards the edge of the board as it slides out of the holder. And then you can just remove the battery from the holder. There we go. Now, just so you're aware that once you take this battery out, all of the save game data on that memory card is going to be gone. Because the battery serves as the voltage input for the chip that helps hold that data on the chip. And as soon as that voltage source is removed, that data is no longer gonna be saved onto the card because there is no voltage input into that chip. So as we look at this battery, go ahead and turn it around, and it is gonna be a CR2032 three volt battery. And before we change it, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna measure the voltage output of this battery and see what that voltage output is sitting at. 
So let's move all, all this stuff off to the side, move our casing off to the side, just kind of get it out of our way. Scoot these screws over so we have enough room to set our multimeter on. Alrighty. So I have my multimeter set to the 20 voltage DC setting. The rounded bottom part that has the small perforations on it is actually going to be your negative side of the battery and on the rim over to the other side is going to be the positive side of the battery. So we'll go ahead and check the output of this battery and it looks like it's sitting at 2.82 volts and it's bouncing back and forth between 2.81 and 2.82. So that tells us that this battery has a little bit of charge left but it might not be enough voltage output to be able to keep the circuit going and to prevent from the data being corrupted on the chip itself. Now that we tested the old battery, we're going to grab a new one. It's going to be a CR2032 replacement, 3 volt energizer battery. This is going to be a lithium battery. And then we'll also test the voltage on that to see what the difference is between the battery that came out of the pack and the battery that we're going to replace it with. So testing this battery, it looks like it tests at 3.24 volts. And that's a little more than the 3 volt rating on the battery, which is perfectly fine. However, that is significantly more, almost an entire half a volt or so, greater than our older battery. So we're going to go ahead and remove our voltmeter or multimeter from our workspace. And we're going to take our new battery and just slide it right into the battery holder of the memory card. When you're putting the battery in, just make sure you push it all the way in to where this little tab right here secures the battery inside the holder. And then it's going to be ready to be put back into the memory card shell. So when you line it up, make sure you line up the two upper posts. Make sure it seats properly down in there and it doesn't move around. And then you can go ahead and put the back of the casing back on. After we get the back of the casing on, we can go ahead and put on our screws. And send them home. And a battery swap in the larger performance packs are as easy as that. Now we'll go ahead and set this off to the side and we'll bring in our smaller memory pack. Now this memory pack actually has just two screws on the backhand side. So we'll go ahead and take those out right now and I'll show you what this battery mounting system looks like. Once you get those two screws out, with this smaller pack, what you actually have to do is hold on to the front of the face, and then on the back of the face, it's actually going to push forward just a little bit, and then you can pull it right off. And as you can see, there's a couple of little slots right here, and there's two tabs on the backhand side of this shell that go into the slot, and they push back up towards the top so it secures the back and then you just put the screws in to help hold the back in place. So we're going to go ahead and take the main board out of this small cartridge and take a look at the battery. So as you can see there is a strap that goes over the top and then you look right here there's another strap that goes to the bottom. Now this battery is actually soldered onto the board itself. The two contacts are here and here and you actually need a soldering iron in order to get these batteries out. Now, there is the possibility of putting in a battery holder like what's in the bigger versions of these memory cards. However, there are fairly cheap replacements for these batteries that come with the tabs already on them. And all you need to do is desolder this battery from the main board and then put the newer battery in and then solder it back into place. Just so you're aware that if you ever need to change a battery in one of these Nintendo 64 memory cards, you can run into the possibility of needing to do a little bit of solder work in order to change that battery out like you would need to do with this model here. And while we have this open, we'll go ahead and test this battery just to see what the voltage is and uh, see if this one's going to need to be replaced 
sooner rather than later. And we'll bring our multimeter back up here. And looking at the board, there aren't any markings on the bottom side of the board to designate which is the positive and which is the negative terminal for this battery. So we're just gonna go ahead and test it out and just see which one's which. If you have your lead swap back around, it'll show up as a negative voltage like it does there. So it's reading 3.16 negative volts. Now if we swap our leads around, we can go ahead and get a better accurate voltage reading from our battery. And 3.18 volts. So that's actually not too bad. That tells us that this battery is fairly well preserved and that it might not need to be changed for a little while longer. However, just for the simple fact that these batteries do hold your save data and while you have them apart before you use them to uh, save any games on, or if you start running into issues a little bit down the road like we did with the larger one, go ahead and change out that save battery. But before you do that, make sure you have another memory card that you can transfer your save data to. So let's get this meter out of the way. And we'll go ahead and put this card back together since the battery doesn't need to be changed right now. And there you have it. There's the two different types of memory cards and two different types of battery mounting methods that you can run into when you need to change out these batteries. So just keep in mind that if you do need to desolder the battery from the board, just make sure you don't stay on it too long with your soldering iron while you're trying to get the solder off. That way you don't ruin the copper contacts for the battery tabs on the board. Because if you do pull those up from the substrate, it's going to be more of a pain in the butt. Just try and get it soldered back in and you're probably going to have to run a jumper wire so you can complete that connection to the circuit. And other than that, this project is done. So thank you for joining us today as we took apart two different types of Nintendo 64 memory cards and took a look at two different types of battery mounting methods and what you can expect when you need to change a battery on one of these memory cards. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. If you'd like to see more videos of us doing similar things with similar different retro gaming devices, getting them all repaired, uh, getting some battery changes on some game carts, or just troubleshooting systems that aren't working like they should, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And just to make sure that you don't miss out on any of the content that we put out, please feel free to hit that bell notification and request all notifications. We also have our own Facebook page at Rehab Gaming YT, where you can find out exactly what episodes are coming out what week and what projects we might have coming up for our channel. So without further ado, thank you for stopping by and we hope you have a wonderful day.